I'm Tammy Jones, and I am the 2014 U.S. Amateur Champion. I'm Linda Wang, and I'm the 2017 U.S. Amateur Champion. My name is Dana Aft, and I am the 2013 U.S. Amateur Champion. My name is Kenneth Brisbane, and I am the 2014 U.S. Amateur Champion. Yes! Yes, baby! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to continuing coverage of the U.S. Amateur Championship from Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. We are down to the final four, and my gigantic friend Jeremy Jones has joined me here in the one. booth. We'll readjust <coughs> his camera here momentarily, but uh, I'm a bit taller than you, but yeah, this is I mean, a little extreme. You grew overnight. Yeah, well, I Those told you I was feeling you've been good. Eating. There you go. Now I don't feel short. Uh, I got a little Batman <laughs> angle going on. All right. Aside from our uh, funny camera angles, we do have the final four here at Strokers in Palm Harbor. We've got the hot seat match for you folks right now. That's going to feature Jason Shearman, Port St. Lucie, Florida, and Daniel Gamble of Hickory, North Carolina. Both players still undefeated in this event. This is going to be a race to seven, of course. Combination of eight ball and nine ball. Five games of eight ball. They are starting in the eight ball set. Up to eight games of nine ball. And as we mentioned, double elimination. So what that means at this point in the tournament is that regardless of the outcome, one of these players will be in the final, but the other will still have an opportunity to, to compete. And they're going to take on the winner of the Josh Watson-Blake Baker match, which is also just about ready to kick off. We'll try to keep you updated on that score as well, as I know there's a number of folks interested in how that shakes out. Meanwhile, Daniel Gamble with the break, and we are off and running in the hot seat match. Yeah, he's made a solid on the break. And the, the great thing about being in the hot seat match, you just have to win one out of two matches to get in the final. One, this one, or the next one. So, faced with a tough situation here in the opening rack just because of the seven ball. Doesn't have a choice. You play make it, take it here. Take what you make, excuse me, not make it, take it. Both these players assured no worse than a third place finish now. Yeah, and whoever loses this match will go on to face the winner of the other match going on between Blake Baker and I think it's Josh, Josh Watson, Watson yeah. right? Yeah. There is no easy roads left here at the U.S. Amateur Championship. Yeah, and I haven't got to put my eyes on the man playing Jason right now. I haven't got to see him play yet or Josh Watson really. Dan Gamble's a good one. He's yeah. here he pretty much every year okay, out of North Carolina. He okay. has finished as high as runner-up in this event. So, Trying to do one better this, this year. And you'll see immediately he opened the seven up. And the reason why he did that is because the 11 ball is very difficult for, for Jason and just kind of felt like it was okay to do so. And I'll tell you what. He's gotten himself in another position to where he can go for a, go for a shot here, feeling like he has a little insurance. If he happens to bury the three, the solids are doable. No, he's left, uh, he's left Jason, I think, absolutely perfect on the 14 to bump the 11 open. I think, anyways, I think that angle's there, and I think Jason will want to get after it right now. Now, it's a little tricky. Because what's the next shot? If you don't get a shot on the 11, you might be elevated over the 1. But I think he's got to take a chance at moving the 11 here. You wouldn't want to move it real hard. Just bump it open like that. Nice shot. And you see how controlled he was with that, right? All right, now he's pretty in the clear. That was about the only problem. He's got to shoot the 11 and move the cue ball for the 9 or the 15, most likely. He's got a 13 up in the corner also. Jason defeated Jason Jones earlier today in the first round. I really like this the setup that you all have here as far as for the final day. As I always say that, hey, let's put the players in, the, in a position to play their best pool. And only bringing back eight, I think you really have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring back so many that guys can get a little fatigued. and Yeah, you got to wait around longer than you want. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it just doesn't <laughs> always bode well for the best pool for the players. So I like a tournament that always 
thinks about, hey, let's put these guys in the best position to play their best at the right time. Yeah, we started the day with eight players. After the first round, we were down to six, now down to the final four. Now taking on the one. Oh, nice shot, and he's comfortable. He got down and shot that with top inside English and didn't really bat an eye. This is Daniel's 13th appearance at the U.S. Amateur Championship. Best finish coming in 2016 as the runner-up to Brian Parks. Daniel's brother Alan got him playing when he was 18 years old. Alan's also a great player. We've seen him here at the U.S. Amateur Championship as well. Daniel out of North Carolina. When you think about Brian Parks, he's, he's kind of like... <clears throat> For a lot of players in this U.S. Amateur, he's like, kind of like that heir for Tiger Woods. You know, how many majors would I have if Tiger Woods wasn't here? You know, <laughs> right, so. right. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, we'll keep you a little updated out here on the outer table. Blake Baker with a break and run to go up one nothing, and what would be the quarterfinal match? Boy, what a run! You know, he dropped his very first match of the tournament to Ernesto seven six, and he is just clawed his way back through that one loss side all the way to the final four yeah and you even said it that during that match that maybe both but we definitely expect to see one of these guys on sunday and we did get both on sunday ernesto yeah, who lost his first match today so he finished in the seventh eighth position all right he's a little stretched here he's got to move the cue ball a little bit maybe that if he can just hold it right there the 10 in the side goes that's what you would want to do in this position because you're stretched and really getting to that next shot here looks like the out. Um, so I don't know if he's straight enough on the 13 to be able to hold the cue ball right there. He may have to move forward and come back up into position. Again, if you're just joining us, this is continuing coverage of the U.S. Amateur Championship from Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. The hot seat match. One of these players, the winner of this match, will move on to the final. All right, he's gotten a little elevated on the over the three, so it shouldn't be the 10. I'm sure he'll take the 12. No reason to take on a ball in this position that you may miss. So, but he's got plenty of alleys to move the cue ball, though. So we'll see if he wants to go 12, 15, 10, 11, or 12, 15, 11, 10. Probably 10, 11, I would think. Well, one, one thing good for Jason, if he can win this match, he'll do at least as well as his wife and the other one. Right, so. right, right. That's a good point. So Man, a little what pressure. A, yeah, what a finish. A little pressure on this match here. Jason's wife, Julia, the runner-up in the women's division. So no matter how this shakes out, man, what a finish for the two of them. That's right. A lot to talk about on that, I'm guessing, drive back to Port St. Lucie. All right. Looking at how he wants to get on the 10. I believe it'll be the 10. Next. That side of the table so clear, it should be fairly easy to move into position on the 11, and the 11's near for the 8 in the side, maybe. So, great spot here for Jason. Jason again out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. Dan Gamble out of Hickory, North Carolina. Hickory, that little town has produced a lot of great players. Well, several great players, but a lot of really good players mm -hmm. as well. It's just right outside of Charlotte, a little small town. You wouldn't believe just in Hickory alone, there used to be just a couple pool rooms in such a small town. All right. Just hold, hold off the 11 for the, probably the 8 side. He might draw up for the 8 in the corner. Yeah, if it's sitting a little funny, you don't want to make that in-between stroke. You might as well just go ahead and let your stroke out a little bit. Good decision. I think I, it was 
was it Raymond or no Cleary I was talking to yesterday <clears throat> excuse me and we had discussed it uh, during Jason's match with who did Jason play yesterday that was a big match uh, Raymond yeah. and uh, <clears throat> Of course, the comment that didn't, we didn't see Raymond's best. It wasn't his best match, but he also commented that it wasn't Jason's best match either. Meaning he's got more in the tank. Mm. I'm sure he got pretty comfortable yesterday to get to this spot. Well, he takes a one nothing lead here early on in this race to seven. Speaking of that race to seven, it will be a race to eleven in the final. Yep. Records. Extended race, yeah. single elimination in the final. Race to 11. Well. Looks like we're going to lose Jason for a little entree. Appetizer. All right, Jason Chairman to break. one nothing. Probably won't change anything off that first break. Actually, I think Daniel broke the first one, maybe. Jason picked eight ball. Yeah, Daniel broke the first. He had to play safe on the first shot. Oh, he broke the head ball from the side rail, and he hit him well besides a little off on the on the head ball and scratch, but I mean, got a nice opening. Now it'll be ball in hand behind the line. Looks like to me, solids are doable. Uh, uh, I don't know if he's, I think it's behind the line. I think this might be, a, yeah, Jason's gonna notify him that that's a good job there, Jason. So we'll see how he wants to play it. He wants to probably get at that three as quick as possible. Not taking much time there. He's going to need to fall on this three decent, though, to be able to move the cue ball. So it would be the six. Maybe just stun forward a little bit. All right, that looks absolutely perfect. So if he can reach it easily, he should move two rails out for the five up the table. Good thing is he's got the one and four to really help him, so. Oh, he just came one rail. I don't know if he doesn't have the 13, which I think he does. I'm not sure what else he has to shoot at. So even though with a miss from Daniel, kind of unexpected miss, still tough position for Jason with the stripes. Yeah, he's got to go. I think if he goes ahead and tries to run out, which I think is okay. Is the 14 not going the side? He's looking at a bank, maybe. So maybe he's cut off on the 13 here. Because I think the 14 would play in the side as a cut shot if he could shoot the 13 first. A pretty smart shot there. Taking care of a problem. Don't think he really left much for his opponent. Tough cut shot on the on the four. She may have to go for it. I don't know. I mean, the 15, 11 are definitely difficult, but the 12 near, and I think he should shoot at this. I think if he feels like he can get shape. Oh, great shot. The two goes. He's got a chance to get out now. If the two doesn't go, he's still got a chance, but he's definitely got to work a little more. All right, Josh Watson wins the game number two to tie the match on the other match going on between him and Blake Baker. So it ties the match at one apiece. We're here at one nothing with Jason Shearman and Daniel Gamble. 
may have to bank the two later. Play this, get on that little gap to shoot the three and then bounce out. Well, no, the bank doesn't go. The 14's in the way, so nothing easy. Maybe the two slides in. If the two slides in now, kind of feel like it might. Yeah, definitely, I think it does now. Otherwise, he may be able to draw off the three and open the two up for the side, but man, very uh, touchy there, difficult. shot just to get the corner there that was a really nice shot good stroke don't think it goes by the 15 but yeah he's got this corner here now the 8 doesn't go by the 9 maybe it does <clears throat> if it doesn't he may have to hit follow English here and try and bump the 11 or get to the rail and bump the 11 and get out with the cue ball Difficult shot as well. No hanger. shot. Really nice stroke. Didn't even contact the 11. And now with a cupcake 8 in the side. After a really nice out to tie the match at 1 apiece. say Jason didn't expect Daniel to run out from there and nothing against Daniel just the situation he didn't probably wouldn't have expected any of the players to run out from there Big clusters on the left side of the table, and the cue ball got a really bad kiss, but nothing easy. Look at all this trouble on the one side of the table there. I'm not sure exactly how you'd want to attack here for the run out. You may just, you know, look at trying to pick out which balls are the advantage and try and get one of those down to get started and reevaluate from there. Five ball gives you a chance to open the balls. The three, the three goes in the opposite corner. So I would say solids. I might shoot the one first in the lower right. Just hold right there for the five and open the balls up. I think. Just stop the cue ball there on the on the one. He's going to shoot the two. I think the I, don't, I wouldn't shoot the five because you want a little more angle when you shoot the five to try and disrupt the balls a little. 
Not so sure he's really going to open the six up here. Maybe. But he's not going to have a ton of movement on it unless he really hits it hard. Over the seven a bit. I think open it up enough. <clears throat> Missed the solid though. So that's going to be a little upsetting for Jason. I like him shooting this first if he feels good about it. Try and get maybe on the three here, go into the 13 or something like that, or do you go up into the three? It's not a bad option either. I mean, you'd like to play clean position, but if it looks like it's something that's gonna get you in trouble, why not go up into him? You got the two ball next. All right, he got on the three. He opened the eight up. I think he opened the eight up. Looks like it. Daniel doesn't take a whole lot of time. Nice shot, and he looks like he's in a great position here now from what looked like a lot of trouble. He's going to have to get the bridge. Tall man, but that's a heavy stretch. So don't fool around going around the 14. Just kind of come straight up the table towards the one. Like that. That way nothing gets, you know, don't have any problems. Okay, he wants an angle here to move the cue ball. Ugh. Okay, he's got enough, but... You can tell he needs to get all the way up to the side pocket here. Anything short could result in tough position on the eight. And that's, that's real nice. So Daniel, I think, is going to get his first lead here in the hot seat match. Two to one. We have two more games of eight ball left, then we'll move on to the nine ball. More of a head ball break there. He's made a solid on the break. Solids are tough and got a lot of work there. The three eight and the, the three eight's difficult and then the two ball of course, but This, oh, I thought he was going to catch the point there and put him behind the one. I like the idea for sure. Well, Jason in a good spot with ball in hand. 
you can take care of a couple problems always when you get that ball in hand. 13 and the 14, he's got to deal with. So we'll see how he decides to play it. Looks like he's going to move the three out. Okay, nice shot. Now he's got the 14. The eight's a little bit of an issue, but plenty of work before worrying about that too much. what he's really surveying right here of course the run out a little bit but I think he's really keying on the eight like what am I going to do on the eight so you can see the stripes are very runnable moving forward for the ten I like his pattern here leaving the nine I think the nine anyways last can. I thought he might slide over to take off the 12 there, then use the 10 to get on the 15 and the 11. The 9 drops in the lower right hand corner. Easy to fall off the 9, either going forward for the 8 underneath in one of the upper corners or dropping on, on the 8 in the side pocket that's open where he's going to play the 10 here in a moment. Maybe going to use the 9 and then the 12 to come across. Gotten himself a little out of line here now. I still would use the 12 now. So I would shoot the 11-15. I know he's a little elevated, but the 15 leads to an easy shot on the 9. Then you can shoot the 12 and come across between the 3-7 with the cue ball for the 8 in the opposite side. I think he wanted to pick off the 9 first, uh, but that's okay. The 9 will lead towards the 12 pretty easily. you got to make a little more of a shot on the 11 right here, but... This is funny. I, th I like him shooting the 11 here. And maybe he's worried about because he's a little elevated, I guess. But he's got enough angle to move the cue ball. He gets a hair thin on the 15. He can always move the cue ball for the 9 on the side. So I think he's got to shoot the 11 here, in my opinion. If he gets heavy on the 15, he's just kind of a stop shot there on the 15 to get to the 9 to the 12. Like I said, really leads towards the 8. All right, pretty nice. So like I said, he can roll this in with a little left English and go by the five and have the nine on the side, I believe. I wouldn't want to leave the 15 to get on the eight. I just kind of feel like that could get you in trouble. Maybe he's looking at the nine and the 15, 12. Just doesn't want to take a chance on moving the cue ball off the nine. Yeah, he's in good spot. A good spot now. Blake Baker now up three to one in the quarterfinal. Okay, now he's falling a little bit where he may use a little inside English to come two rails between the 7-1 and land on the 8 in the side. I think he's a little flat uh, to be able to just hit a high left English and come one rail across. That would be kind of what you'd want to do. 
but a little inside English is all right. And Jason Bowman back with us. 2-1 here, huh? Yeah. Looks like he's trying to cue it with a little left, so don't let up. Oh, that was a nice shot. Perfect stroke. You let up on that, the ball kind of like dies out and goes towards the seven a little bit. Got to keep that little bit of check, that left English on there. And 2-2. Two, two. Again, this is the hot seat match, so the winner here will punch their ticket to the final. these races to seven with all these good players for the last couple of days. You win this match, you get a little breath of fresh air knowing you're playing a race to 11 and the next one for the tournament. Whew, had some of that Freddy shrimp. Good yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. Not so great for the breath under the mask, but... <laughs> it's all right. <clears throat> So we've seen three different types of breaks. They all been from the side rail now. Jason broke the head ball from the side rail and scratched, but he hit him well. You know, sounds crazy he hit him well and scratched, but I mean, he got a good outcome, good spread. You see that again right there. Ball's really jumping out of the rack. Looks like he's made a stripe and he's in a decent spot. The 15's some work. He's got a 13 near. So, tough, tough little situation here. I mean, he's got a lot of work, but uh, great camera view there. It doesn't appear the 15 goes. I think you got one of the <clears throat> participants wants to give you a thumbs up. Appreciating the commentary. That's Clint Clark. Yeah, he played well. <clears throat> nice finish for him. All the players showing their gratitude for the streaming we appreciate that very nice <clears throat> it's our pleasure to do it such great matches we've seen here the last several days another one here in progress tied 2-2 in the final game of the eight ball set and the good thing for Jason here is he's got the 10 and 14 together so <coughs> Anytime you have those together like that, there's really not a bad area to get. And also, you can produce the angle you want to, like, get on the 13 maybe. So might be something like the 10 or the 14, either one. Produce an angle to go to the side rail and drop down between the 3 and 13 maybe for the side pocket or something like that. And he can maybe get on the 15 that way as well. well he decided to try and do it right now. Needs a little bump. Not bad. Still the real problem was a 15. Josh Watson and Blake Baker also in action at the moment. <clears throat> you see the beads up there. Is it 4-1? That's right. 4-1 in favor of Blake Baker. <clears throat> They've just moved from the 8-ball set to the 9-ball set. Blake will have the break. I mean, you may consider banking this 13 right here cross side because it lays nice to draw the cue ball back and get behind the 15 a little bit. So I know it sounds like something you normally wouldn't want to do in this situation. I mean, he has an open pocket he can cut the ball to, but I just don't see really how to get on the 15. And that's, if you don't get out, you know, ain't no use in making any more balls. If you're not going to get out at this level, it's going to cost you. Maybe he can draw it enough to bump the five open. Uh, okay, got in between them. He's going to get jacked up over here, but still going to have to shoot this 15-9 combo, I think, which still isn't great, but, I mean, what else are you going to do?
is Jason's first appearance in the U.S. Amateur Championship. Quite the run for him. As well as Josh Watson, who's, again, overplaying Blake Baker. In the Where's elimination Josh match. From? Josh is he's currently out of San Diego, but I believe he's originally from the Atlanta area. He's okay. a, he's a, I'm not sure if he's an active duty Marine, but it sounds like that's what led him to San Diego, just based on some of the comments and what he put on his bio sheet. He's got a bright future ahead of him in pool if he chooses to stick with it. Going to be a top four finish for him. Yeah, it looks like he's he was looking at maybe even a kiss shot here trying to make the nine, but I think... I think the combo, he, well, looks like he's playing the kiss shot. So he's going to try and <laughs> rub off the 15, drag the cue ball into the nine, and hold position for the 15 also. Looks like he hit it pretty well. And the one thing he did is he left everything very difficult for his opponent with a nine ball hanging. So we'll see what Daniel wants to do here, but nothing easy. The sevens, he can't get at. I don't think the six doesn't go on the side. Maybe it does, but. Doesn't go by the two in the corner, so it's gonna have to go all out here, I think, on the six in the side, Jason. It's difficult. Maybe you can get at the seven. Really nice effort there by Jason Shearman and pretty smart shot as well. Matt, Josh, and Blake are playing on table five, which <clears throat> would be kind of behind the camera angle you're seeing right now. About two tables over, back. So, and I think Blake just extended his lead. 5-1. Five, 5-1 one. Five, one now. Yeah, and Josh had a couple little <clears throat> chances in two of the eight ball games that got away from him. So, he's going to have to uh, regroup a little bit. That's a tough challenge down 5-1 to the defending champ. We'll see what he's got, though. Yeah, you would think, though, if you're going to get it going with that winter break, the nine ball part of the set is probably, the, the you know, your best chance. So, <clears throat> Zane, Jason Jones, has been eliminated from this event. He is, I believe he tied for fifth, sixth with Clint Clark. Again, if you go to compusport.us, see how all the players finished up in this event. Great effort there by Daniel. Tough shot on the six. And now, you know, in this spot here, you definitely want to win the little mini session inside the session, which is the eight ball. If Jason can get out here, he'll win three out of the five games of eight ball, and we'll move on to the nine ball. <clears throat> expect that at all and I didn't understand how that happened really. He's gonna have to make one heck of a cut shot on the 15 now but maybe just a little, little bit of a you know mistake in the brain a little bit there that was you could see the nine was hanging he could have went rail first very easily and held for the 15 now. Got about the only one of the only places on the table that makes the situation difficult. He's close to it, though. Cue ball's going to have a lot of speed. <clears throat> so that's going to be pretty upsetting, I think. For Jason, uh, really good situation. Just kind of got away from him a little bit. And could have gotten a little more out of that. So he's going to have to cut the one on the side, it looks like, and move the cue ball now. So he can't contact the eight. Got to dodge the eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he clipped it just right, Jason, so he's got the four. Got to hit this clean, though. It's a ball that wants to come off the rail. Oh, he miscued. Watch out. He miscued. And scratched. Jason will have ball in hand here.
just pinch the cue ball back to the rail. He may just stop it. Kind of his preference. <clears throat> All right, so eight in the side to take a 3 2 lead and get on to the nine ball side. No problem there for Jason. Has the advantage as they move into the nine ball set. Again, this is a race to seven. The winner will move on to the final. The loser will face the winner between Blake Baker and Josh Watson. Baker currently leading that match. I believe it's still 5-1. Yeah, 5-1, they're battling. Oh, there we go. We got a little camera angle of the <clears throat> That's about to be a Baker jump match. shot by Josh. At least part of the table. We flip the camera around. Two balls briefly. coming in quickly. There it is. Here's a look at Blake. Blake doesn't mess around too long up there, does he? He no. gets up and shoots. I love that. I love seeing players that move quick. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, we Back saw to the stream table. A, a lot of that a couple years ago got comfortable, you know what I mean, with the situation. Got to playing really well and moving around the table quickly. All right. Made the one, one inside. inside. Yeah. yeah. Long shot on the two, but definitely doable for Jason. He's going to have to put a little effort into the cue ball here. Some type of draw, you you would think. Looks like to me he may flirt with the scratch if he just kind of hits a roll shot here. So he's going to dig on the cue ball. This may be the quietest final day I can ever remember here at the U.S. Amateur Championship. A lot of folks opting to tune in online rather than come down. We'll see if that changes in the next couple rounds as we move closer to the final, but <clears throat> probably only about 20 people in here currently. Yeah, something like that. Very quiet. I was very calm that, in the room. You know, the players like to enjoy themselves after they're out of the tournament, so maybe last night they <laughs> they all had a, you know, a few of the few drinks and, and uh, some food and probably watch some basketball, maybe played a little cheap pool. Mm-hmm. Okay, big shot here. Leads easily to the three. It's all about making the two. Maybe has to put a touch inside not to hit the six with the cue ball. Nice shot. All right, he's got some work, though. Probably digs on. He'd love to be like right where he's at right now with the cue ball. That would just be ideal. So he's going to dig on the cue ball again, catching two rails most likely. It's a good shot. Almost exactly where he was. We saw this in Jason's last match too. When he moved to the nine ball set, he really got going. Well, not didn't give his opponent much of a chance to get to the table so and I saw that kind of for last few days that um, the eight ball almost made the guys get a little too tight it seems like you know they just were really keyed on oh I want this perfect position or I'm worried a lot it's a it's a game that worries you that's just how it is and uh, nine balls pretty you know <clears throat> easy to figure out as far as what you're going to do and kind of tells you what to do a little bit where eight ball you have to make choices so Naturally, you get a little worried. It kind of just affects your game overall. Jacob Watson just picked up another game. I'm sorry, Josh Watson. There is also a Jacob Watson in the event. Yeah, another good player. <clears throat> no relation. I don't believe, at least. No, I don't think so. One's out of Texas, the other mm -hmm. out of San Diego. Josh going to take a quick break. <clears throat> And Jason looking to get a two-game lead. I don't think we've had that yet here in this match. Really pressing, you might say, grinding. All right, 
Pocket set nine in the corner. Extends the lead, as Jeremy said, to two games. Needs just three to secure his spot in the final. He'll have the break. Daniel Gamble will prepare the rack. Only four remain here at the U.S. Amateur Championship. <clears throat> Another will be eliminated after this round. Yeah, it's set up perfectly. The guys don't have to wait much. They'll just play, play, play until we'll crown a champion later. Chop cue ball, not a scratch you see very often. Of course, the side pocket you do, but not in the same side that you break from. <coughs> Usually, it's the opposite side. All right, the one goes. A little bit of work here. One and the two, not a problem. Three to the four to the six. That's a little bit of work. And the eight to the nine, you can see the separation between the eight and nine. And anytime the, the ball's on the side rail there, Jason, and you got to get all the way back down table. That makes it very difficult for the eight to the nine. So if it's out in space a little bit, you can run the cue ball pretty easily, and it's it's not a whole lot of a chore. But anytime that eight gets on the side rail, things become a little more difficult. Okay, he's got to make a decision here. Is he going to just slow pull it, or is he? Oh, watch out, cue ball. I think he's going to be all right. And he gained a little angle. Actually, a nice angle. Another man doesn't take much time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to see him let his stroke out here. Got a little straight, so he's gonna have to like draw it in, pound it just a hair to get the cue ball out off the rail. Yeah, I like that, nice shot. Uh, All four right. three, yeah. right? Four <clears> three. <throat> get that adjusted there. Dan Gamble trails by just one game. To Jason Shearman. All right, Blake Baker making quick work. Now up six to two in that quarterfinal. Yeah. 4 3 in favor of Jason Shearman. We'll get that corrected here momentarily. There you go. <clears throat> he took a little off the break there. Whew, that cue ball just held on that lower pocket, too. Yeah, and he may be corner hooked here. Cue ball lays on that, that facing. Uh, sometimes you can't get at a ball that's, that's near. No, he can get at it. Should play off the top of it for a safety, maybe using the 7 3 up the table. Danielle with a good question. Oh, she he, said, no, Go ahead. How many times, if ever, has a wife and husband played in the finals? I don't believe ever. Uh, the, the, only, the only pairing I remember that might have been close would have been Troy and Tammy Jones. Mm, yeah. And I don't believe Troy made it to the finals. So I believe that would be a first. Yeah, great <clears throat> couple of great people there, Good Troy question. and Tammy Jones. I love those guys. And it's funny, Daniel was about to shoot at the two, and then he realized that, hey, I can't even see it. <laughs> the, <laughs> the facing on the pockets got me. So, funny moment. Blake Baker now up 6-2 in his match against Josh Watson. Looks to close that out. 
And I don't think Daniel will get this back. I think uh, Jason's definitely shooting at this combination. It lays natural. You just roll the ball in. Two should come over to the end rail. Cue ball should kind of join it. Uh, he overcut it. Dan Gamble back at the table here. Sounds like the Shearmans are a pretty popular couple back in Port St. Lucie. A lot of folks tuning in, rooting them on. Royalty, it sounds like, probably, back in Port, Port yeah. St. Lucie, right, <clears throat> for the pool? Right. I'd be signing up for their team if you can. I'm a three. They could use me. Always need a good three. I'm guessing between the two of them, they're <laughs> they have trouble staying under the handicap limit. Can we have proof you're a three? <laughs> Is there any proof in the building? If I pick up a cue stick, you'll see it very quickly. Okay. I'm a good three. I believe it. Good three. All right. Great shot on the two there by Jason. Nothing easier. Too much easier on the three, though. So he's got to kind of like hold the cue ball. He can't just let it run anywhere. So he could hit this with a low or actually a high ball, either one, to get in a similar position. It's just a matter of how much he wants the cue ball to travel. Just a little heavy there, so. Blake Baker is going to advance to the final three here, it looks like. He's got a pretty easy nine ball to win. Boy, seven to what a two. run through that one loss side he's had. Holy cow. Yeah. Great follow. Oh, he missed oh. the nine. So again, we can we, we can get him it. from even if you're not on the main table, we can get you. We just do it better than they do, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, Brian, a three is commentating because I'm a lot better at talking than I am at uh, pool playing. All right. I don't know if he left a shot or yeah, this may be cuttable, I don't know. Looks like the cue ball's got a little gap there between the cue ball and the five, so that means a lot of times you can, you know, kind of manufacture making this ball, kind of spinning it. He's got a dig on the cue ball though, because the cue ball wants to go towards that opposite side pocket if he's if he can shoot at it. If he can't shoot at it, he's in, he's kind of trouble here. He's gonna go to the rail. Nice shot. They got a little off angle here, so does he want to try and move the ball or is he just going to take the shot? He may, you know, have to slide the cue ball over a couple inches. Just take the shot on the seven. That's what I like. Oh, he could draw it. All right. Nice shot. Pretty natural here. May check the cue ball up with just a hair of right English just to make sure you don't go anywhere near that right side pocket that's just above the nine. Oh. Josh Watson picks up another quick game with a two nine combo. Pulls within six, two games. Yeah, six four. Let's see if that missed nine ball comes back to haunt Blake. Meanwhile, Jason Shearman. Has no problem with that nine ball and extends his lead over Daniel Gamble. Five to three.
tension starting to mount here in strokers. Matches get a little bit tighter. Stakes get a little bit higher. And Josh is in a great position to make it 6-5. Now he's still got six balls to clear, but he's right in line. Well, certainly he's got to feel like that's new life. He, I'm sure he thought that was all but done. No, oh, that might have got him there. He got <clears> hooked <throat> on the four. Looks like anyways, but uh, maybe not. Maybe you can see it, but we'll get back to that action. But back at the main table, 5-3 for Shearman. I don't see anything down just yet. Look at that ball spin. Yeah, you'd be amazed how how long you could spin one of those balls, especially if you like put it in an ashtray. That used to be a like a like a you know trick bet. Really? Yeah. Spin it for like two minutes in an ashtray. Just sit there and spin, spin, spin. All right, Daniel's got to get it going here. Five three. Watch out, six ball. Not going to like it. Hmm. Don't think he's going to pull the jump cue out here. That's awfully close. He's a tall man, though, so he can reach it, get to it. That's a big part of the battle jumping sometimes. Hmm. Looks like he's going for some equipment. Has his trusty jump cue there. Plays with the McDermott jump break cue. Well, yeah, that looked tough. Yeah, made contact with that six first, so. Jason will have ball in hand. What do we see on the other table, Jeremy? This well, could be it. Don't jinx it. I ain't trying to jinx it, that's for sure, but he got a little out of line here on the six, so he may have to shoot it quite some distance on the seven, believe it or not. Seven's there, though, but got a little out of line, Blake did. Now, speaking of in line, ball in hand, there's never anything gets you more in line than ball in hand. Jason here is in that position and has a chance to go up six to three, commanding lead in this race to seven. Nine's going to be conceded. Blake Baker has advanced again. Nice show of sportsmanship there between Josh Watson and Blake Baker. And as Jeremy said, Blake Baker now secured himself a top three finish in this year's U.S. Amateur Championship. He will take on the loser of the match you're seeing currently between Dan Gamble and Jason Shearman. Yeah, you can say, to say the least, Blake is motivated. He's wanting to plan two pro events this year. Or <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Maybe get two spots in the U.S. Open. Can well, you do that? <laughs> two barrels, like they do the poker re-entry. Uh. <clears throat> Heck of a run for Josh Watson in his first U.S. Amateur Championship appearance, finishing in fourth place. That's got to go a little. That's going to get on top of his work a bit. And I'll tell you what, that angle grows quickly when you're close to it with the cue ball. So this could be a pretty thin shot to both the corner or the side. Yeah, I was impressed with Josh, and I'll tell you what, he's a super friendly guy. Yeah. And, you know, like, <clears throat> maybe I'll, if I had something to tell Josh, I'd like, during the match, man, just don't be quite so friendly. You know, <laughs> maybe. Hmm, I mean, sat night. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't really ever say that to him. Sure. But he's, I'm just saying, really Carmen, nice how nice of a yeah. guy he was, yeah. This all weekend, he was great to me. Every time, had something positive to say, and I watched a few of his matches. Uh, being in the booth here, and it seemed like he was always real gracious to his opponents. And I believe what we were told is he's a U.S. Marine or was a U.S. Yeah. Marine. So, all around a good guy to know, Josh Watson, out of San Diego, California. Great run for him. All right, Jason's going to pull the ball to the rail and just take the angle to. Come two rails off the seven. That's like perfect. You would. That's about the line you would have it on. You might set it 
a few feet closer if you had ball in hand, but pretty perfect here. Now, no reason to get thin on the eight. Uh, so you want to come all the way down two rails and then catch the third rail. That's normally how the guys play it. They'll catch the third rail, about the middle diamond over here on the left side rail, left long rail. Uh, he hit a little thick, so he's going to lose a little bit of cue ball movement. Needs it to bounce a little bit. All right, now he's got to float this a little. Just because he caught that seven to the hole a little thick, it cost him about a foot of cue ball movement. Shouldn't be a problem. All right, Jason Shearman now up, going to be up six to three. One game away from a spot in the final. Once again, Dan Gamble will prepare the rack. And Jason will be breaking with an opportunity to put this match away. It's a good place to be. Six three definitely in striking distance for Daniel. We are playing winter break, so these guys can put a few together, that's for sure. Corner ball down, got a little bit of a miss hit on the one, meaning a little thin, but not the worst. Don't know if he'll take on the cut in the corner. Pretty steep, and he's the speed doesn't really agree with me to hold for the three. It looks like it's going to be a little heavy on the speed. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he can bounce off that second rail and hold for a little cut. It's a shot, if you're trying to be a great pool player, this is a shot you should practice every day. You get good at that and you get confident at that down the rail past the side pocket. It's just a huge advantage over a lot of players. A lot of players become very timid. But Jason, I'll tell you what, he, it's almost like he didn't want to think about it too much. You know, he just decided, hey, I'm shooting at that. Let me get down, pocket it, and hit it perfect. Going for the extension here. Now, I'm not sure the five goes by the seven in the corner, so he'll want to pull this you know, back some, but he can't take a chance of getting behind the six. He has the five in the other corner that's open, but he's got a little angle here, though, so I don't expect a whole lot of cue ball movement. Oh, he got a lot out of that. Great shot. Had a question about the final match. It is a single elimination, extended race. So, no, the, well, it's eight games the hot of, seat winner does not have to be defeated twice, basically. Yeah. It's eight games of eight ball and 13 and nine, right? Is that correct? I think that math works out correctly. Yeah, that's 21. 21, yeah. you gotta get to 11, so yeah. I think that's the breakdown. All right, wants a little bit, maybe a hair more bounce there to have a natural angle to go around. Oh no, he can go one rail now, okay. A lot of times the guys want that angle to go around the seven nine rather than just one rail up, but, and he could stun this also. So this is where being at the table makes a huge difference on how you play this shot. Looks like he's going to go one rail to me. Looks like that's the shot. Going to come straight towards the six. Doesn't want to get too straight. Oh, he's perfect. You see, he just broke straight there. Just barely got past it. Now he can naturally get to the seven. May have to stun a little bit instead of draw. Kind of up to him. Just barely crept by that nine, huh? 
close. Yeah. <clears throat> Very close. I may follow this ball. Probably follows this ball either off for the side or play the nine in the opposite corner. Just go where the cue ball kind of naturally wants to go. Like here. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's got to go a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I don't, hey, cue ball's on the rail. I don't take anything for granted. I've seen the greatest in the world when that cue ball gets on the rail and pressure's high, and self included. Jason Shearman, a nine ball away from the final. He's got it, folks. Punches his ticket to that championship match. He will await the winner of Blake Baker and Dan Gamble. We are in continuous play, so I imagine we're just going to take a short break here, and then we should be back with continuing coverage of this year's U.S. Amateur Championship. Stick around. <laughs> 